A new album highlights the talented musicians from our area from years gone by. The music was recorded in downtown Knoxville between the years of 1929 and 1930. It's called Satan is Busy in Knoxville, revisiting the Knoxville sessions, and it features 27 recordings. We talked with Dr. Ted Olson, who contributed to the historic album. August of 1929 and April of 1930 were the periods of the recordings that were done at the St. James Hotel in downtown Knoxville. What makes the Knoxville sessions completely unique from the Johnson City sessions and the Bristol sessions is that the Knoxville sessions recorded a large number of African-American artists. As Knoxville illustrates, as the recording sessions done there amply illustrate, there was a strong African-American influence upon early country music. And some of that music was recorded in Knoxville, including, I would say, some of the most influential recordings made in Knoxville were by African-American artists. I would recommend highly that people listen to the recordings by Leola Manning, uh, who was a gospel singer who also sang songs that seem today like blues songs, although she didn't think of them as blues songs. They, they seem in the spirit of Bessie Smith, another East Tennessean. But uh, Leola Manning was a Knoxville native who uh, recorded only at the Knoxville Sessions. Another important African-American artist recorded at the Knoxville Sessions, well, frankly, he was part of a trio, but his name was Howard Armstrong, and many people know him as uh, Louis Bluey. He made his very first records as part of a trio called the Tennessee Trio. That was one of their names, or the Tennessee Chocolate Drops. The, the group had two names because uh, the producer of the Knoxville Sessions issued their two recordings at Knoxville, both for the uh, African-American audience and for the white audience. So it's called Satan is Busy in Knoxville because that is the title of one of the great uh, records made way back when uh, during the Knoxville sessions at the time of the Great Depression. So we wanted to honor Leola by honoring her, one of her two great songs. She recorded other songs as well for the Knoxville sessions, but two have become modern day classics of early Appalachian blues, and they're both on this set. Just a sampling of Knoxville's